Hello and welcome to Alphabetti Spaghetti. It's back. It's Derm show. And I've got no Nicole and I've got no Sam and I've got no Jenny. And it actually feels perfectly peaceful, perfectly relaxed. And finally, I can just relax into my own show, as you know, what I've always wanted. I have got Spike Milligan, the Spike Milligan, the vet Spike Milligan is on the phone. Spike, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, Dee. How are you? Good. I'm excited. And I have got a fan favorite, in particular the female fans, Kieran Glynn, fresh from a badminton, uh, what would we call it? Massive success, would that be sufficient? I'd, yeah, for me it was. Yeah, I'd take massive success, I think, for personally, yeah, a massive success. Ah, that was great. Well done. Yeah. Uh, you know how the show works, don't you? I, You guys can pick a number, and uh, everybody has sent in their different words. This week we've got, uh, we're on the letter D. So everybody sent in their words. Uh, I've just put them in a random order here on my desktop, and you can, um, yeah, whatever comes out, you've got to talk about it. I, I'll help, but like mainly you two will be talking about it. Uh, we've we got Sounds certain good. numbers to choose from. You what? You've got, <laughs> I, oh yeah, you've got like, sorry, you've got like up to, I think, I don't know, about 20, 23, I'd say. I mean, we won't get through them all. We never get through them all. I'd say we've probably got about, let's say 40 minutes so we can go back to our lives. So let's say 40 minutes, we'll rattle through them. Okay, D, so based on the fact you don't know how many you've got, should we start with the number one? <laughs> I do know. We've got 21, but we will start with one. Let me see. One, one, one. Hmm, one. I was hoping you wouldn't start with one, if I'm honest. One came in from uh, Facebook, Barry Brady. And Barry decided to make number one, Dearm Stress Sense. And his comment, yeah, I know. His comment was, uh, Dearm nails the I'm not at a horse trials, I'm at a rock concert look at the trot up at Badminton on Sunday morning. I think it was him, smiley face. Um, I actually got quite a lot of negative feedback um, at Badminton for what I was wearing. I wore um, what I thought was a Scandi chic look is what I described it as. So I had my, my runners. Upon, re my... upon, re upon reflection, D, um, <laughs> upon reflection, was it still Scandi chic or would you change that <laughs> synopsis? <clears throat> I mean, it was. I just don't know if the equestrian world is ready. I mean, for Chatsworth, I put back on chinos and a shirt and people were so much happier and relaxed into talking to me so much more. And if I'm honest, I, I recorded a pod with with Spike. Um, was it Saturday morning, Spike? at Badminton. Yeah, it was. I yeah, yeah. a picture and I did see it back. And yeah, I agree. And just, I mean, uh, may I ask? Having having seen having seen the picture, would you still describe yourself as Scandi chic, or would you I would, again? I, yeah, I, I, I would. Still, I mean, there uh, are a number of descriptions that I think were probably bandied around, and Scandi chic I don't think was ever mentioned. No. I think it was that bloke in the trench coat. Yeah, <laughs> look, I, I mean, that was one of the kinder ones, spikes. Uh, I, I, I would say, <laughs> on reflection, I feel that at times maybe that those outfits at badminton were open to misinterpretation. That's as far as I'll go on it. I think it was the equestrian world isn't ready for what I brought to badminton. So I'm reverting back. It's chinos and shirts. Um, okay. And D on reflection, have we reflected any more on badminton? Your review podcast, although entertaining and had some really cool points from Berto and Sam, it wasn't hugely reviewy. Uh, uh... I will, I will give you that. I've actually never received so much abuse as I got uh, over the course of last week over that badminton review. And then I was under so much pressure that I was like, Sam, find Berto, find Piggy, find somebody who will talk to us about badminton. And Berto said yes. But we were actually sitting in Berto's lorry, guys. And he has obviously the two little small babies. And Beck was there and, and the rest of Berto's team. And you know what it's like. We were just sitting in the lorry at like, you know, after a day of dressage, Lotte and Chloe had just done a 30 something dressage, which maybe ruled her out of contention. So I was sitting there and myself, Nicole and Sam and Sparks and all of Berto's family. So, I mean, we, while it would be great to sit and chat for an hour, I was kind of, you know, after a little while, I was like, he said his piece, let's get out here. And now we're in that awkward stage where we, you know, we've only sort of reviewed it. So, I mean, Spike, you review it. What did you think? What was your, you were there. It was, it was excellent. 
Yeah, I, I, I always leave badminton with this uh, amazing sense of sort of generally satisfaction. And I, I see people achieving their own achievements through the, the course of the week. And it's, it's odd being, being a vet or, you know, one of the you know, many vets that end up at badminton. But I see such, you know, such an achievement even leaving the start box sometimes. So um, it's, it's quite a little uh, sort of emotional roller coaster through and, you know, and seeing uh, trials and tribulations of different people, but also seeing great successes for people in their own way. I think as a whole, I was delighted with the way the cross country. Um, I, he's a genius of a course designer. I mean, the horse has finished so well. Um, I mean, I stood in the finish area and they recovered really quickly. The the weather was spot on. The ground was spot on. You know, and having having it such a challenge to get the time yet have horses finishing full of running still is is a really for me a really difficult thing to make happen. Would you agree, Kieran? I mean, I think it was. I mean, it was such credit to the, you know, to to Eric and and all the guys at badminton for that. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd agree with I'd agree with all of that. Um, we start with the course and the way the horses finished. Um, I know my own one finished brilliantly, like she was galloping like a trooper. Still, um, towards the end, um, very clever. And the more I thought about the course, the cleverer actually I thought the course was because when you walked it, it felt really intense, kind of in the middle of it. Um, and I've done, I, I don't know, I didn't speak to too many other riders about where they were on their clocks and stuff, but I actually was kind of fairly close to my clock, even when I came out of the middle, but I couldn't quite make it up because he just asked enough questions late on, you know, that he just made just touch the brakes through the quarry, through Huntsman's. Um, but yet the horses were keeping their jump really well. Um, the ground was perfect. Couldn't really have been any better, I don't think. Um, and I agree with Spike's initial point as well. It's for me, it's kind of like living in a bubble for a week. You know, I've, I've got my own, I've got my own performance. I've got my own things to be doing. But around you, you're looking at people who have achieved amazing things, and there were some unbelievable achievements. Um, Berto, my heart broke for Ollie really on the Sunday, and at the same time, I. I think he gave the black horse on Saturday one of the best rides. I said it afterwards. I think it was one of the best rides I'd seen cross country. Um, and then you see some people who you know very well, close to you, whose week didn't didn't go the way they wanted. So it's a it's a it's a massive week, an interesting week, and on a personal level, a brilliant week. I had I had an amazing week. Um, for me personally, with with the mayor, it was kind of a it's an interesting week. We didn't really maybe start it. Not really. I mean, might as well not sugarcoat it. We didn't, Thursday wasn't the way it was, <laughs> Thursday wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Um, you know, and, and, uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I had to have a real, I had to, I had to sit myself down on Thursday evening. I had to sit down and have a, um, I had to have a conversation with myself about kind of the way the rest of the week was going to go, you know, um, like I had, I had numbers picked for myself. I had goals picked. And I knew I could still, in terms of numerically, I knew I could still fall within my numerical goals even after my poor dressage. But it just meant that I had virtually no room. There was no room for error. I any thought of, you know, a long route here or taking a second there, that I just all went out the window. So I had to get the hammer down on Saturday. She was amazing Saturday. Really, just galloped and jumped, and we had one slightly sketchy moment through the Shogun Hollow and after that it was as close from where I was sitting it was as close to a faultless round from her from what I was sitting on like she never missed a beat the whole way around everything mm -hmm. kind of went the way we hoped and then she for her to show jump the way she did on Sunday was yeah I was I was ecstatic leaving on Sunday I have to say having come from a, you know a relatively dark place on Thursday I mean I'm still competing in badminton I'm still living living my dream but you know it wasn't like that many yeah. people standing there watching you. It's just, it wasn't the way it was meant to be, but yeah, a brilliant, a brilliant way to finish it. Uh, ditches. Can I ask a question on ditches? Uh, Vic it's a, Vicarage fee. It's your show, or, uh, yeah, Thank you, Spike. That's the kind of, that's the kind of deference that I don't get when Nicole was on this. So I appreciate that. Um, Vicarage V or Cotsmore Leap, which do you want? Which do you want? Uh, I don't uh, know, Spike. Which, Spike, which do you want? 
<laughs> I'm not going near either of them. <laughs> um, I'll be, I'll be yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, I'd probably agree with Spike, but when you've turned up and paid the entry, you might as well go and jump them. Um, I suppose it kind of depends. Um, when you've pulled up Winners Avenue to Cotsmoor Leap, it's a very, very big fence. Um, not that it gets, I don't think, a whole lot smaller. Maybe the other way, I haven't jumped it the other way, but um, it's, it's a big old fence last year up the top. Vicarage V is horrible. You know, it's it's just not everything about the fence when you get there. The way the way the angle, the way the rail kind of falls away from you, you know, and the ditch is it's it makes uh, visually it makes not a lot of sense when you walk it. If that makes sense, you know, it's not yeah. Cots, Cotsmore is a much more imposing fence. You know, Cots, so Cotsmore kind of when you get there, you look at it and you're like, oh dear, you know, it's just so. It's so full, like you, I suppose, I don't know how, probably the best way to think about it is you look at Cotsmore and you think, if this goes wrong, I end up, you know, fully in the ditch, like all of me and all of my horse, and we're just down there somewhere and nobody will ever find us again. Whereas Vicarage V, you, you think that if it goes wrong, you're going to slide off it. You know, you just kind of, you, you glance off it. It kind of has that feel to it. Visually, it, it, it kind of pushes you away from it. So, yeah, neither are mm. particularly pleasant. Um, but, yeah, I suppose Cotsmore, because it's right in front of you. You just I'll you have you, to just try. I'll tell you the one ditch where I remember seeing more problems, though. <laughs> you know, at that highest level, the horses seem to jump those ditches, and especially the, the Cotsmore Leap. But uh, I'll tell you what, the ditch of Blenheim, and I don't even know whether it's got a name, um, you do see a few, you know, the odd horse every year make a real mess of that, whether that's because they're generally more inexperienced at the level below. But uh, you see some pretty, pretty average Blenheim, pictures from coming out of that. Do you? The Blenheim ditch. Yeah, the Blenheim ditch. I'd agree with, I'd agree with the why though, Spike. Um, I think the difference there is you see, so Blenheim obviously runs a CIC three star for eight, nine year olds and they run their CCI. It's, it's hard to get it's hard to get a big old ditch like that, you know, at your one days, because like it's, a, it's a very, very expensive and time consuming fence to build, you know, to build and put that money into a fence that only your, let's say advanced class will jump. I'm not suggesting that's the only reason, but I know myself that would, it would definitely be one of the reasons that you wouldn't have a heap of them knocking around the country. So you will see three star horses rock up to Blenheim. They won't have jumped that many of them. And then they suddenly get there and look into the bottom of it and go, Oh, Oh dear. That's very bit, you know, and once you've done that, it's kind of over. It's kind of over. Okay, next one. Uh, Kieran, I believe it is your choice. You have, uh, as Spike has helpfully told us, numbers between 1 and 23. Um, let's go for, we'll keep it odd. Three, please. D? Three. Is three, sorry. Is three on your list? I mean, it's kind of... I'm three is on my list. Of course, it's on my list. Uh, number three, beginning with D, is Derek de Grazia, the Tokyo course designer, of course. And I was writing my little show notes earlier, and what I put beside his name was a huge amount of praise every time I've been in a press conference in Kentucky over the last couple of years. Um, I remember Chris Burton, Oliver Townend, and Michael Young in particular, all three of them in a press conference, and all they wanted to talk about was a the ground i think this was last year a the ground and b the course and specifically the course people talked about just how you know i guess how oh, well, look i don't know but the design and you know the uh what else did it talk about the, oh, they just went on about derek a lot i guess so do you know anything about him are you looking forward to potentially riding over to tokyo um what, what, um, do you know? what do I know? I, I've never jumped one of his courses, um, but I would have seen what I've seen. Um, he would I be looking forward? Yeah, I mean, obviously that would be great to be jumping one of his courses because it would mean I'd made it to Tokyo, which would be awesome. Um, in terms of what I've seen from his courses, he he looks to build he's not actually dissimilar i don't think to eric he, he he's quite technical the way he builds likes to build a corner loves to drop into water and seems to really like um his questions in water not afraid to go quite narrow in his water complexes certainly rolex 
think last year was he seems to always have a question in water. Um, looking forward to it. He plays a lot with undulations as well, which if we're looking forward towards Tokyo, I would imagine they will have plenty of undulations for him to play with, kind of move the balance of the horses around a little bit mm. and, you know, and try and get some, pick up some twenties there where he's, you know, running you up a hill to a fence and then dropping you down the far side to something, to a skinny, to a corner where the balance kind of goes up and down and left and right. Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing what he, what he brings to, to Tokyo. It's actually a really interesting one, I think, as we try to think about Tokyo at the moment in terms of what type of track it's going to be. You know, arguably, the way conditions were, I think Tryon was generally regarded as a very good cross-country course, but we were a little bit reliant on the elements on both sides of that. You know, I think if if it had been potentially the day after, uh, you know, I think we potentially would have seen an awful lot less people potentially make the time. Um, I know there was, you know, there was obviously so much talk going into it about about the hills and about the humidity, um, neither of which really had the impact <clears throat> potentially that certainly that the hype pre um, pre pre World Championships expected. But I think the course at Tokyo is going to be interesting. We are going to be in, you know, very humid conditions. I expect certainly very different conditions for a lot of the European horses. Um, and we had, we had a lot of inside the time rounds at, at this WEG. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how, yeah, how he catches them, you know, the quality of the field that will come forward, there will be, you know, certainly at the top end of the world championships, you're going to be taking on some very fast combinations I would expect. So it'll be interesting to see what penalties he's able to bring from some of those. Do you know what about the, Spike? Yeah, well, I think the emphasis, I know a lot of the effort into the preparations for Tokyo is the, you know, climatic conditions. I think the anticipation is, is of this sort of high humidity, high temperature. And I mean, the challenge for these course designers, you know, you, you look at, you could even, you know, look at badminton and go, we imagine if it had rained for the three days before Saturday and how different the picture would have looked. I mean, imagine at WEG if it rained, you know, if that storm came in two days earlier, you know, it's such a challenge for these guys to sort of plan it based on what the footing's going to be or what the, you know, the conditions are. But I mean, there's no better guy for the job. And uh, I mean, Kentucky would be pretty notorious of being very variable when you arrive at that time of year in the spring. So, um, you know, that's going to be the challenge. And I think that's where a lot of the preparation could go into from, from you know, preparing the horse point of view. Mm. It is a massive challenge, isn't it? Not only knowing who's going to ride your track, but also what conditions they're going to ride it in. Mm. Do you want a number? Do you want a number? Oh, go on, what do you want? I was just curious, like just thinking about it from a course designer point of view. I, I wonder, because obviously we're going to have only the three on a team i wonder does that enter his mind frame at all when he designs mm. i mean obviously we can't answer it's more of a, a kind of an open question but... let's I leave mean, it he... out there <laughs> i don't know i mean i doubt it i i wouldn't think so would, would you i don't know I... like because what would rio have looked like with only three on a team with that cross-country course you know, and like, I mean, it was, I mean, you know, Pierre Michel knew, knew he was putting out a real tough cross country course there. I wonder, would, I, sp- I suppose, would he have softened Rio if there was only three on a team? Yeah. Weg, Weg had a lot of team completions. I think almost all of the teams completed, I think eight of 10 or something like that. I mean, it was the highest ever. So it was a, yeah. Uh, I, 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 don't. I, I can't wait to see how, I mean, like the new format, there must be a tactical side to it that I'm just not seeing of it yet. You know that you know when does the the fourth person come in or with the substitutions and I mean, okay, I guys know how it lads, works. lads that, we're like, literally on to one of you're taking away one of my numbers here i've got drop score written as a number do you want to just do drop oh, score I'll cross it off the event let's talk about the drop of, score yeah okay drop score i mean this sport is about to see a massive change i think this is a much bigger change than the multiplier potentially although that did go across all the levels but for the championships, I think this is a massive change and one that I deep down believe is actually going to be really, really exciting. I personally believe team eventing is the best of our sport. I think when we see um, when we see a cross-country day where all of the 
you know, a single round is affecting lots of other rounds, you know, in terms of the the team. I think that's when the excitement is at its absolute highest. Um, I think the three in a team in, in what it's going to do to eventing and how it's going to impact those championships is, is personally, I think is a really positive change. Um, and I think it's going to be brilliant. I think it's going to be brilliant, brilliant entertainment. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And the, as I say, I'm sure there must be some tactical side to it that, you know, people with better brains than me, you know, uh, you know, Dickie Waygood and Chris Bartle. I mean, what would they drop? You know, if you looked at the British Wave team, you know, what would you drop? I mean, they're all stars. I mean, they all, you know, clear inside the time. I mean, you probably, you know, if they're all as good as that, how do you, you know, it's the luxury of not needing to drop anything or move anything around. But there must be an element to it that maybe I'm not seeing. I'm just a vet. <laughs> well, I think the key is the cross-country reliability in terms of that jumping clear rate now. You know, that is, that's your starting point. Whereas, arguably, I would say dressage is a, you know, is a very big player in um, certainly individual competition. I think that's probably a big part of the Kilnebrad Nevo at badminton decision. You know, he actually went and broke, you know, he actually delivered the best ever dressage test in the history of badminton. So vindicated in that degree and then was able to get around across country in what I think he finished sixth, was it? Um, but in individual eventing, dressage is absolutely your, you know, your starting point and and your biggest one of certainly the biggest influence is certainly up until you hit five star level it's the biggest influence over what happens at the end and to be honest without getting too wrapped up in dressage although it does begin with d if uh, you know some people will say oh the cross country at badminton is still very influential and it is influential but not necessarily when you're looking at a win and i was thinking about this on the walk home but i mean only what was it only probably three people i think sam mentioned on the last podcast only oliver tom was it only oliver and tom ahead of piggy you know on what on the score she finished on you know i think it was 26 there wasn't many people below that um you go back to the week before kentucky cooley master class i think he did he lead the dressage and went on to win it's only one person you know then Laura Collett, Chatsworth ERM, led from the front to win. The other Chatsworth class, uh, Samurai Detho. So, if, but D, isn't like, that the but like isn't that the definition of the challenge in eventing? Isn't it the challenge that you've got a horse that's capable of galloping and jumping and show jumping is and also being as uh, calm and settled and as well trained to be able to do the dressage to a high level as well. Now that isn't that by definition the challenge. So why are we surprised that? the horses that can do all three of it very well are the ones at the top. And I know well, all, three you, of it, I, I, all three of it very well, unfortunately, isn't the ones at the top. All three of it very well is potentially the ones in the middle because, and I think this is something that is worthy of discussion for you two, but on the basis that all three of it very well, you know, if very well means you, sh- you go clear across country and you don't have any time and you show jump clear and you don't have any time, you get zero for both those. But doing very well in the dressage, what is that? Is that a score of 30? Because at five-star level, you know, you're still in the top 5%. So I guess that would be very well. But 30, you know, has won, you know, only one or two of the five stars in the last two years. You know, you're Sorry, starting. Glenn. Hello. Sorry, Glenner, go on. It's quite interesting listening to you because I agree entirely that it doesn't change your winner. But I think it changes hugely your team when you're talking about Olympics. Yeah. So yeah, I agree whoever whoever's gonna go and win the Olympic gold medal individually is gonna go and win the Olympic gold medal individually. But the ones that you're talking about that do that do all three very well, you know, like like Spike alluded to there. So if you can find three of those, none of them win an individual medal, but that team wins possibly a silver medal maybe a gold medal if the person who wins the gold you know because it only takes one member this is the thing now with the olympic format it only takes one one whoopsie one yeah. tiny yeah. and like we've seen some major ones like in the last few in the last few olympics you know where and i'm talking like where a horse just puts a foot in the wrong place like tim price you know in rio like the horse slips on a corner like it's not and that's it bang team gone goodbye 
thanks for playing you're not winning a medal you know you're then down to individuals and this I think that's that's such a, it's such an interesting point in terms of you're you're right the the person that leads the dressage still goes and probably leads start to finish or goes very close to it but the team the team aspect of it is like is is massive there's going to be so there's going to be yeah it, I think there's going to be a few curveballs it's entirely you're I mean you're completely right it's enti- the drop score makes it entirely different how to win an individual medal and how to win a team medal like you're looking at com- you're looking at completely different things and the team medal now is about reliability um you have to get your three horses you've got to pick three horses who will give you jumping clears whereas i think on an individual medal you're probably maybe not an individual medal maybe because of because of the influence that has in a championship but let's say you, you're talking about an individual five star or, or four star long um i think you're you could take the approach of I will lead the dressage by five marks and one in three or two and three, I'll jump clear. Um, and I'm willing to take that risk because if I do, I win. Whereas I don't think that person can be selected now or certainly but, it's much harder as a team manager to select them. Well, well, that, that kind of, that brings me to another interesting question. Is there, is there merit for a team manager to disregard going for a team medal? And just send three individuals with a view to coming home with an individual medal, and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> depends who uh, pays their bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the interesting thing is, it is a, it is a question for federations that come there for programs that comes up quite a lot because it's often where funding comes from. You know, funding is often from a the amount of medals and b the color of them, and previously i think with a drop score you had the ability to take a wild card which might win you an individual medal but you were okay to say yeah i'm not positive that they're going to be able to jump clear but i've got three good reliable ones there behind it that at least give me a shot at you know at a team medal as well if i get three into the top 10 pretty much guaranteed a gold medal um so yeah just another, I, I, just, another just another point with just with my vet hat on you know, it, you know, it's that trot up on the, th- you know, on that Sunday morning as well. You know, there, you know, there's going to be, gr- you know, even more emphasis on soundness. Um, I think there's going to be greater emphasis on team vets. You know, they they all do super jobs and they're amazing, amazing vets and individuals. And um, but I think the pressure ramps up on those guys a wee bit, doesn't it? You know, that it, feeling comfortable and confident. You know, you can never get away from the the what ifs. But uh, you know, if you look, you know, losing someone on the Sunday morning is going to hurt. You know, hits pretty hard now, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I think a substitution at that point is maybe twenty penalties. It's big, though. You know, it's big in the context of again going back to the the dress H D. Uh, twenty penalties is a fair old swing. Uh, one thing that I do have to mention <laughs> on dress H before we move away from it, and we will move away from it because we've got a few of these to rattle through before I let you both go. But dressage, um, for people who want an interesting little nugget to drop into conversations, uh, dressage is across the sport, at every level of the sport internationally, and also across every section of, of, of performance. So not just your Roz Cantor, Julia Krajewski, Ingrid Klimka, who are now pushing, the, and Oliver Townend, I should say, pushing those scores lower and lower and lower. But actually, dressage has dropped across the board by about five marks uh, in the last five years. And that trend, you know, that trend, it, well, that is the trend. So we're seeing it getting lower and lower and lower. So if you're scoring the same as you were five years ago, you know, you're not standing still, you're actually going backwards. And it is an interesting development, I think, for the sport <clears throat> as a whole. It's another part of of the conversation of, of of what is eventing but because and we believe that it's because that that is the phase in which you do have the ability to improve whereas you can't improve on a on a on a clear inside the time or a jumping clear with no time in either of the other phases that is this that feels to me like the phase where people are practicing the most where scores are improving the most and where we have a reason to continue to train certainly 
certainly that's the trend we're seeing. And I think that filters down through the sport. You see more and more, um, you know, I think the example Sam often gives lads is, um, you know, Michael Young's Sam, or even p- potentially a classic Moe as well. Like, would you pick them out of a, of a class, um, you know, at Western Park or somewhere now? You know, they're opening, you know, their first year or two years of results would leave them maybe 60th, 65th. And there's no way, when I say there's no way back, there is no way for them to win ever at the lower levels because you cannot, you know, you just can't go lower than the person below you as long as they jump clear. You can't prove that Classic Moe is better in the other phase. You can't prove that Toledo, the cursor, you know, jumps higher because you just get zero. Everyone gets zero as long as they jump clear. Whereas the dressage horses, you know, tend to go lower and lower and lower. So I think it's a really interesting one that is certainly one to watch and certainly one to have a conversation about, about that concept of the three phases being equal in that if there was that Z line that we talk about being in place, you know, that if you achieved a certain level in dressage in the same way as we say, in if you achieve a certain level, which is jumping clear across country and within a time, or if you achieve a certain level, which is show jumping clear and within a time, that you get zero. And that concept of the complete sport and the three phases being balanced, that you have a test to pass in each phase and not one which has an unlimited advantage, I think is one that is at least worthy of, of consideration across the sport. I think you've covered that very well, dear. I mean, interesting, is the finishing score dropping at the same level, at the same rate over time? Uh, the finishing score is coming down, but not necessarily to the same extent. And at certain levels, particularly top level, we are seeing time penalties go up. Now, you have to be a little bit careful with that because there can be fluctuations with so at top level when you think of there being so few events. You could end up with an Adelaide like last year, which was very wet. You could have a wet year at badminton. Um, and you could have, you know, maybe a wet year at at Burley or Kentucky, and suddenly, because there's so few at the top level, that it could have a real influence if nobody makes time at a la the last few years, like certainly last year at badminton and, and only two the year before. So you've got to be careful with the time trends, but generally you would say that time penalties are not on the same trajectory to the dressage score, which is potentially a little bit of an indicator as to type of horses which are coming through now to the upper levels and i think that personally i believe that's because the horses which are winning at the lower levels are dressage primarily and the horses that are winning are the ones which are bought and sold and that's not necessarily good news for the sport over the next couple of years as those boys try to go into the uh, into the four star and then potentially as in, into the five star Oh, yeah, that's my rant over. Sorry, team. It's had, to, had to get it off my chest. We all okay with that? What do you think? Could we have a Z line? Would you? Would you be up for it? Are, are you okay, Derm? <laughs> Sorry, oh. Glenner. I, you know what it's like sometimes. I, you know, I get on you're the very, soapbox. You're very emotional. You're very emotional this week. I mean, it's a big week for you. It's a big week. Liverpool in the Champions League final. City won the other day. It's a big week, but I, you know, I'm just I'm worried about you. That's all. I just worry about you. Now, away you go. You, no, you, I, you know what? About... I've got to stop. I, I'm, I'm, I think um, I, I feel I feel a little bit broken, actually. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to just hand over to you. Pick any number you want, Kieran. Pick any number. I would suggest you pick number 11, if I'm honest. Uh, number 11. This one comes in from Marcel Tattersall, the um, mother general all-round superhero behind Team Tat, Gemma Tattersall. And her D that she wants to talk about is actually Daniel Craig. Is there a hotter Bond or... Uh, oh, that's, I'm, a, I'm a huge Bond fan. This is, this is huge. This is, yeah, I mean, it's a big question. I mean, the original Sean Connery, you know, way back, he was Mr. Universe at the time, you know, he was a, he was a good-looking man, Scottish accents. Daniel Craig, though... I mean, see where she's going this is tough i mean yeah i'm torn here i am torn i'm gonna take i'm gonna take a small time out to think about this i mean i'll give you a couple of things it's not a spike even opinion daniel craig i mean that scene where he's coming out of the sea uh one of the early ones in which he took over i think that was uh that was a sight sight for any man 
to be hauled. That was a sight. Um, yeah, I think that was probably one of the one of the big Bond moments. I I, I would argue. Uh, what did we did we like Pierce Brosnan as Bond? Wouldn't be his uh, biggest fan. <laughs> you I, I mean, knew you yeah. wouldn't like him. Yeah, like I'm. I, look, I like Pierce Brosnan, but not not, not from. He wasn't kind of actiony enough for me. You know, he couldn't bash people in the way Bond needs to be able to bash people. Yeah, I, do I think, kept thinking about him as Mrs. Doubtfire, um, not Mrs. Doubtfire, but like um, that, you know, that lad who kind of, you know, got involved with um, Miranda. So, no, that is good memory, Miranda. Yeah, that was <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire's other half. Anyway, I, I never really liked him after that. I found it difficult to separate real life and his character in that film. I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, I, I can't go anywhere with that. You've just That's taken fine. a stand, a bit of a bit That's of a fine. Uh, Daniel there. Craig, Daniel Craig, yes or no, lads? Oh, Daniel Craig is yes for sure. I mean, yeah, and, it's, a, it's a yes for me as well. It's, it's a yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he, whether he's the greatest Bond ever is is you know, I mean, it's it's a raging debate, but I mean, yeah, Daniel Craig, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, Spike, you're up. We're gonna lads, we're gonna fly through these. Time to get back to our lives, isn't it? We've we've been here for ages. Oh, sorry, I had a big rant in the middle, so I'll have to let you guys talk for a while. Uh, Go on. You've okay. You've got. Uh, you've still got loads of numbers available. How about number ten? Number ten. Oh, good, good choice. Actually, I'm glad you picked this. Number ten on my list says dogs at events? Question mark. What is the best dog? Question mark. Who has the best dog in eventing? Question mark. So you've, you can have any of those dogs at events. Sorry, what is, do the, you think? is the question? Who is the biggest dog in eventing? No, absolutely not. Absolutely. This Spike, this show doesn't get edited. So can you please not have that conversation? So I just didn't quite hear the question. That was all. Also, I need to go home tonight and I would never stop. Um okay, who has the best dog? I presume uh Spike, you'll take that little old that little old very old dog that you travels around in the passenger seat of your oh, car. Bless my old boy, J J D Jack Daniels, he's pretty old and decrepit now but he's uh he's been with me about 11 12 years now so yeah he still limps around i think he's my st- my level of you know if the horses are lamer than my dog then i need to do something about it <laughs> he is yeah he is a little he's very i mean he's been old I, since i knew him uh, he's i'll give you a been. shout for the best dog in eventing who said don't say the prices do yes. not say the Tom's. prices yeah Tonks was a knew, legend uh, he is very popular, but he's also, uh, I mean, he really does what he wants at events at this point. Like I was in, I remember seeing him at Arville, I think. Literally, no one would even say boo to him. He just walked wherever he wanted, across the whole event, whenever he wanted. And everyone was like, no, nah, that's the price of dog. Don't say anything. He's allowed to do what he wants. Very and popular dog. Why, and that's why Tonks was the best dog in eventing. Because he just yeah, ruled, he ruled the roost. Uh, you yeah, like dogs later. Uh, I I have an opinion on this, so I am against dogs at events. I'm I'm a, I'm a dog person. I like dogs, but I I don't I don't bring my dogs to events. And yeah, I mean, I got chased on the way to my dressage test by a dog in Babington. Where? That's, that's, in Babington. That's a true story. Like I was Where's on my way riding. Was she asking riding? for an autograph? <laughs> oh, yeah. scary Spike, stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> this year's Babington. Like, don't take me like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like 10 days ago. Yeah, so I was on my way to my dressage test. I'm just, like, tottering along, minding my own business. And next thing, there's, like, this little yapping furball, like, charging at me off the lead, you know? And I was, I was, I was relatively polite. I just said to the lady, I said, you might want to think about putting that thing on a lead. You know? I just, I don't, if you bring the dog, I surely it's kind of your responsibility. I also run a lot of events, and, like, I regularly just have dogs randomly wandering around, kind of doing their own thing at yeah, I don't know. Mm. I mean, this is this this opinion is not going to wash well with a large portion of your listeners. I'm, I'm aware of that. England mainly. I mean, England is England is very big on dogs at events, isn't it? They they really love them. It's a, like it. They the two kind of go hand in hand. Everybody goes out for a day of uh, horses shopping and walking their dog. I would say. Uh, what yeah. I I also have on my list, and this is actually probably good for you based on your recent experience. But what would be a good punishment for someone whose dog escapes at an event. Whose dog escapes at an event? Wow. Well, a good punishment. 
I, I think you... would. <laughs> go, on, go, on, go on. I was going to say, I think you have to sit down and explain where it went wrong to Andrew Nicholson. Oh, my God. Wow. A panel, uh, yeah. a panel of Andrew and Janelle. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Nothing would be worse than that. That's a good yeah, one. I think we I should just leave put, it there. I was gonna what put were you going to do? I was going to put them in a room with you, D, and let them listen to you explain <laughs> why, why, why Liverpool will win the Champions League for the next 20 years. <laughs> I actually thought you were going to put them in a room with me and make me tell them about um, the Z line concept. <laughs> 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 you know what? That probably would be a good punishment. They would never go to an event with their dog again. <laughs> Uh, fair enough I'll take that uh, alright uh, coming to the end of uh, what has been a great show which I love D uh, Alphabetty Spaghetti um, okay you've got a few I always kind of start helping people out with some numbers now that I think are good you could talk about some horses so I've got some horses here um, I've got number 18 number 15 they're all horses oh one interesting one number 4 who wants number 4 which of you wants to go first on four? It depends. It depends on what the uh, what the number is. Go I'll, I'll go first on four. I'll go first on four. What is it? Okay, you go. Discovery Valley. Uh, makes me think of ah, oh, quite literally one of my favourite horses in eventing. Uh, Leo Leonidas with Toddy. Um, I thought that was their year. Um, I, I loved that horse, loved the owners. And um, unfortunately, the year, I think, was he in the lead at the time? Did he, was he, he leading was. or second? Yeah, he was. I can't remember what year it was. I think it's what, a couple of years ago now, Two 2017. And uh, came to a, came a bit of a cropper there. But yeah, loved that horse. He was, it, oh, he still is gorgeous, most wonderful, lovely horse. Leo. Um, I mean, I would just, oh, I can't say anything. My heart dropped when you said that. Of course, it is Leo, the the bridesmaid. Two top fives at badminton. It just felt, oh, that disappointing round at WEG. He's just such a good horse. And I, in the same way, Kieran, as you're talking about Liverpool get 97 points and and still not win the league, losing one game all season. My, I, my heart breaks at the thought of Leonidas being the best horse not to win a five star, and that's absolutely not a, a guarantee. I think he has a couple of runs left in him, but um, he is just such a good horse. He just has been, you know, he's been in and around and close to it so much, and I guess it just shows, you know, how that's, tough it is to do. Good- that's a good conversation. Maybe you should stick it out on social media. Be- best horse not to win a five star. Oh, who? Uh, go on, off the top of your head, who is it? Oh, back myself into a corner there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would have to be right up there. Arctic Soul is another, I guess, isn't it? Arctic Soul's been knocking on the door for a long time. No, no one going to let me on that? Yeah. Um, I- for many reasons, he's got the same name as me, which is a good start. Oh, yes, he does, yeah. Uh, Glenner, anyone? Best horse not to win a five-star? No, I'm lost here at the moment. I'm deep in thought. Give me That's a fine. few minutes. Um, okay, on another Sam, one. Actually, Sam would say Horseware Bushman. And that would be a lie. Um, no, <laughs> Sam will be at home. <laughs> Sam will be at home shouting, actually, a very sensible answer, no doubt, but we're here. Um, okay, I have got one. Actually, Spike, I'm just going to give you this one. Um, number 17 is Dumas, brackets, Millie. And then I've put in brackets the next big thing. Do you agree? Um, yes, in a Good. word. Don't think, hesitate uh, like that again. I, I will expand on that. I think, um, I think she has all the tools to continue going right the way to the very top she had a you know a great time at badminton with artistique who's a lovely horse and uh, it was very much a week for progressing and developing and going forward um she's got a great team around her 
with her father and the facilities down at Rosamond Green. And um, I think we mentioned it on our little Saturday morning preview that um, from, you know, I'm, I'm lucky and privileged enough to be, you know, to know them well and their attention to detail super. So um, I think um, you guys highlighted some, some stats. Spike, Spike, before you go on with any stats, I don't think you should just talk about uh, her father. If we, I mean, if we're oh. talking about the team, I mean, I've no doubt that the first person that you're going to hear from is uh, Katie, who is an equally an equally big influence, I would say, on this uh, young rising star. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Good. Right, undoubtedly. go on. Um, I mean, you 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 would mention some stats on Saturday morning about her, you know, and it came out through the B last year about her uh, cross country rates. Um, was a hundred percent clear jumping in 2018 at BE levels, yeah. which is just amazing. Um, and international, 53 and cross country rounds she set out on, 13 international and 14 national, and never had a jumping fault. Yeah, was... and there's some lovely horses in the stable, and you know all the talent in the world, and uh, you know destined for big things. I, I reckon. I agree. 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 Okay, Glenner. Um, yes, sir. We'll have two more, I'd say. So, have to be very. Oh, Spike. <laughs> Actually, I'll save that for you for the end. That's a big one. Okay, I've got one for you, Dliner. I've put it as dressage difficulty. Should we up it? Tempe changes, half canter pirouettes. Chris Burton on our last podcast said, if these horses can do it, why are we not letting them do it? Let them show what they're able to do. Put in tempi changes, put in the half canter pirouettes, make the dressage harder. Yeah. So Chris Burton is, you know, went to Babington and did two amazing dressage tests. Um, you're probably asking the wrong rider at the moment. I mean, make it more difficult? No. At the moment, I would take a novice test. It'd be great. <laughs> Uh, what's your general thought on it, though? Should I mean? Oh, is, you know, is that the phrase? Uh, uh, quite yes, yes, and no. Like the 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 really good guy. I mean, for me, nothing changes really. Ali, Ali, and Berto, and the guys who are incredibly good on the flat, they will still be one, two, three, four, five, and the horses that struggle in the test a bit more, who mentally, you know aren't quite as trainable who prefer to go galloping cross country they just get punished a little bit more you know so you're trying to teach horses that you know they don't enjoy being in a dress as you're trying to teach them tempi changes and pirouettes they're not going to be having any fun the rider's not going to be having any fun and i don't think necessarily it affects the outcome of your class i also you know i see where they're i see where they're going like you're you're progressing the training you want to show off the progression of that training um, I just I don't think it affects the the outcome of the class. Yeah, fair enough. I I don't have an opinion on on that so much, but what I would Fine. say is that I think there'd be I think there'd be greater veterinary support required if you start asking for that greater level of collection in their flat work that you would undoubtedly have to get. Um, that would be my little concern. I think. Um, I love I think when it, you come in with with veterinary yeah me too veterinary yeah yeah. because like there's nothing we can do with that you know everyone's like oh spike well i was dream boss i was just gonna ask spike if he could maybe petition the fei to lower it back to the novice level that i'm looking for (laughs) i'm very happy to go with that welfare (laughs) welfare welfare in glossary Um, rider's welfare (laughs) rider welfare actually yeah exactly spike because you love um veterinary so much and i know you read books late into the night and listen to podcasts all the time about uh about just veterinary stuff generally like that it's pretty much your life a lot of people would say and um so i have a question for you two d's coming up baby doping and drugs yeah i i saw this on social media or something that someone had uh referenced i think uh let's open let's open pandora's box let's open that this one be the let this one be the end okay here we go doping firstly drugs secondly mash them together if you want yeah okay look i i think the one thing that i would underline in especially in eventing but all in the f in our 
main FEI sport is that the standard of horse welfare is exemplary. And the awareness of the veterinary support for these horses that are out there doing the job it, of how to give them the best support possible is very, very high. And the veterinary care is brilliant. If you compare it to what human athletes are doing uh, in a sport such as American football or even just, you know, football, cricket, things like that, you know, we quite rightly are unable to treat horses in that same very aggressive way. We manage them appropriately and have their horse welfare at the highest level. Um, we haven't got, you know, I'm not going to go into the boring depths of things. Uh, I think there was one little reference in a in a question that I saw on the Facebook about shouldn't we just allow them to have a little bit of pain relief on the Saturday night? Isn't that appropriate? Uh, I can see where people come from with that. Um, you know, horses might be allowed to have a sore foot or an overreach or something like that. And that should be a reasonable thing to look after. But equally, you know, what else is being covered up? Um, and what I do know is that the the care that these horses receive through three days, 365 days of the year is exemplary. Um, and I think the rules and regulations that are in place have to be in a position to ensure that. Um, and that's... That's it. I mean, that's... Can't really argue with that. Glenner, you into <laughs> doping at all? <laughs> I just, uh, I, I'm chuckling. I, I think Spike referred to Facebook mm. as the Facebook in the middle of that. Which is funny. <laughs> I know. He's not, yeah. Uh, yeah. he's not okay with social networks. Um, <laughs> um, in terms, nah, I, it's, it's a Pandora's box. I, yeah. I mean, Jerem, I mean, yeah, Spike has hit the nail, the nail on the head. Has he hit the nail on the head there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay away from this. One. Yeah, I do, sorry, I dropped, I, I dropped off then briefly, but I, I you did I, a mic I, drop I, is I, what you did. Yeah, I just said my yeah. thing. Just shut up. Brilliant. That's it. I'm not you did a mic drop. You know that Sam Watson has to, um, since he got into the uh, FEI top ten. In case anyone didn't know, um, he now has to declare where he is randomly all the time. Like he has to cool. say, I'm. You can drug test me at Chatsworth on the twelfth of May. It's mad. Like he was standing beside me today. He's like, "Oh my god, I haven't declared where I am." I was like, "What is wrong with you?" Anyway, of course he took great pleasure in telling me why. Um, <laughs> first world problem. <laughs> it is a real first world problem. I think I'm pretty sure that he didn't forget. I think he might have just me off. Uh, okay guys I'm going to because I've got a load of horses obviously that begin with D and uh, people have very helpfully sent them in um, I'll to give you some name checks uh, Michael Rogers uh, a good friend of the horse trial support group and general all round good egg has asked to talk about Darian Powers of course there's very little to say about Darian Powers other than Andrew Hoy now has another brilliant horse in Vasily Lassos and Darian Powers just lost his badminton record to Oliver Townend and Kilner Brodden Evo they had the dressage record uh, at Babington since the year 2000 and Darren Powers was class uh, The Butcher has asked us to talk about Designer 10 Designer 10 uh, is now ridden by Dirk Schrader which I think is going to be quite interesting be, potentially for him That'll be interesting, uh, yeah. yeah That's an interesting one to watch Le Moulin short format, is it? Is that right? Yeah, is that right? yeah See an entry in there? Yeah, that's yeah. going to be an interesting one to watch Very interesting Um Ellen, Ellen, uh, I think Ellen has been a volunteer of the year and also is besties with Liz Halliday, has asked to talk about Don Janeiro. And I have just put in brackets the horse that nearly ended Echo Ratings. We famously said Don Janeiro would not win Bramham in the Event Rider Masters Leg. I actually famously said there was not a hope. It was entirely impossible for Don Janeiro to win Bramham, which he duly did. And it was very early in Echo Ratings' career. Lost us quite a lot of credibility. Um, Won't happen again, though, D. You've got this excellent prediction centre. Yes, thank you, Spike. <laughs> the prediction centre, which, might I add, has very correctly worked this weekend and actually did pretty well on Veneer Kamira. We had Veneer Kamira behind, um, I think she was third, but from a field of 80, it's pretty good to be able to pick her out there. I'm going to give you both a horse to take home. 
or some horses take home. You have got Emma Ducks has given us. Oh, maybe we'll make this like Desert Island Discs. You know that bit where you can, you're allowed to take a, a horse to a desert island, <laughs> an eventing desert island. Okay, I'm just making this up on what? the spot because it's my yeah. show. Just listen to me. It's grand. You've only got you can take one horse to an eventing desert island. It begins with D. If you need help, I can give you some names. But if not, you can just tell me what you want. But I would suggest the names at the moment I've got are Donner, De Niro Z, Don De Niro, De Capo. Don't forget that little bad boy coming through for Laura Collett. Dargan, Dargan, uh, Emily King, big success at Bramham, and I believe is going back to Bramham to try and defend that title. Hmm. Uh, Darian cool. Powers, of course. Or any other horse you can think of to begin with D, you both get to pick one and take it to the eventing desert island. Well, it's a desert island. It means it's going to be really hot. We're going to need some really thoroughbred. This is a mind. Uh, My mind is melting. It's a perfectly... Kieran, you need the dressage though, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, brothers. Cheers. That was harsh, if I may say so. Uh, well, I mean, you definitely need the dress as if you took De Niro Z. That's what do you think? De Niro Z? Or are you going for a, a jumper like Donner? Either of you. Uh, you want any of these? Oh, I, can't. I, I would have Donner. I think it's just, I'd love yeah, the horse. I, yeah, I think I'd, I'm, on, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, so both of us, we'll share them. We'll both go to a desert island, the two of us and Donner, and we're going to have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with that. Donner is. I was actually really sad for Donner knocking the poles at Weg because he is. Actually, he could be one of the horses that is one of the best horses not to win a five star. He's, he's just an all round champ, isn't he? Cross country king, star of the US show. Still could, no. though, couldn't he? You know, I still think that it could be a day in the future. Very good point. Very good point, Spike. There was me writing Donner off. Um, okay. I mean, there's lots of other things to talk about, like developing nations. Uh, Sean Murray put up that. Uh, Div- uh, no, Tilly, Tilly Bernard. Tilly from Eventing Nation. Tilly Bernard uh, has put up a developing nations. Um, Sean Murray has They've put done, up double. I'll tell you what, the developing nations have done super in the last few years, haven't they? I mean, well, look at Ireland. Well, look nation. at Ireland at WEG. I mean, they did give- brilliant. Over, I suppose Japan are a developing nation as well, are they? With the horsepower that Japan have at their disposal, I, th- I wouldn't say they were necessarily a developing nation from the point of their uh, skill from set. From no but... point, from no point at all, are Japan considered a developing nation anymore? I think yeah. what did they buy two of the world, two of the WAG top ten, on top of all the other talent that's in there? One word answers: Do Japan win a medal at Tokyo? No. Yes. <laughs> yes, for me as well. Uh, okay, that's it. I'm at the end. Oh. I mean, I've got loads oh. more, but like we all have lives. Are you ready? Are you happy? Are you done? Uh, I couldn't be happier. I am Good. ecstatic. <laughs> uh, Kieran, have you got a show coming up? Yeah, we have our first uh, event in Ireland, one day event in just under two weeks. So Kieran is like, I'm so sunburnt. I'm like, I'm so proudly Irish. Like the sun came out and I've just turned into a completely <laughs> red human being. I'm so burnt. It's amazing. My, my left arm is throbbing from being hanging out the door of the tally porter all day. It's amazing. It's been sunny for a grand total of about 48 hours in Ireland and yeah. everybody has their tops off and everybody yeah. is burnt. <laughs> and I'm, everybody. I'm Everybody's like, I, I was walking home on my way here and I, I live pretty close to a canal in Dublin. D, and D, D, yeah, were you wearing your trench coat while walking down the canal? <laughs> yes, is the honest answer. Oh. Jeans, were, a t shirt, trench coat, and runners. Were, were there sirens in the distance? It's not a trench coat, it's a it's a mac. It is, you're right, it is not a trench coat. It is it's a mac. It's not okay. weird. Oh. It's not weird. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like the day I take style advice from you, Glenner, of all people. I mean, you I look smart, agree. genuinely, normally, on the, on the trot up day. 
No, just on trot up day is the only day you're allowed to slag me. Every other day I've seen you. And the David Foster ball, I excuse me, you also wear something nice to that. And other than that, genuinely, what is it? Another 361 odd days in the year. You are a show. And as for you, I, Spike Milligan, I'm also not going to take from you. So don't even, you just don't even get started. Okay, don't even get started on the Scandi Sheik look. D, we were doing fine till Scandi Sheik came along, dude. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, lads, I'm going to let you both go because I feel this is descending into something that might need an edit. And as you know, I don't edit Alf Baddy Spaghetti. It is live. And before anything comes along that might need to be edited, I think we should bid you both adieu. Uh, Thanks for coming on and giving up your time and uh, your book, great. And potentially we should uh, maybe just get the three the A team together again for another little show soon. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Later. <laughs> See you, team. <laughs>